Hello, I'm Tom and welcome to my first episode of the series called Deconstructing the Photo. This is the final picture that I will try to tell you about as much as possible, including the whole process before, during and after taking the picture. Preparation is the key to success. To take a beautiful landscape picture, we need some luck. But we can increase our chances by preparing. The more we know about the location, the better. In my case, I knew the location very well. I had visited this exact place a few times before and I had some ideas about the framing already in my mind. One of the most important factors during the planning process is the position of the sun. I use a website called Suncalc that can show the precise path of the sun on any date at any given time. This is extremely useful for places that we don't know at all or we want to see how the sun travels around throughout the year. Here we can see the exact location where my picture was taken with corresponding sun position 10 minutes before the sunset. For this shot I used Nikon D700 with Tokina 1116 f2.8 DX. You might be wondering why I would use a DX lens on a full frame body and the answer is simple. I had sold my Nikon D90 which was DX sensor camera and I had no other glass to use. Tokina was the only wide angle lens I had at the time and after running some tests I figured out that it's not that bad. It produces pretty nice picture and as long as we stick to 16mm we are good to go. While it's not a proper setup, I shot quite a few pictures like that before I bought the proper full frame wide angle lens for my new body. Again, the best camera is the one that you have with you. Camera was mounted on my Manfrotto tripod. In front of the lens I got a circular polarizer. For the long exposure shots I put ND filter on top of that. Unfortunately stacking two filters gave me a little bit of vignetting, but we'll get to that later. To take the shot I used shutter cable release to minimize the camera shake as well as to increase the exposure time which is limited to 30 seconds when using the shutter button on the camera. Here you can see my camera on tripod taking the shot. I lowered the tripod a bit to find uh, the right spot for the desired composition. Oftentimes, and especially in situations like this, when the camera is closer to the ground, I tend to use live view for the framing, it's just more convenient. The camera was set to manual mode, ISO was set to 200. The lens was at 16 mm and the autofocus was turned off just to avoid any unexpected focusing during the shots. Initially I took a series of regular shots without the ND so that I could use them to extract some details and blend them together with the longer exposures. This might be useful especially if the long exposure is a bit underexposed and we want to recover some of the details in the shadows. In this case there was no need to do that, but I just wanted to show you what the scene looked like without using the ND filter. This shot on the other hand was taken with the ND filter and was underexposed to protect the sky. The exposure took a minute and a half and was shot at f16. The second one was overexposed to blur the sea waves a bit more and to expose the shadows a bit better. I changed the f-stop to 9 to let more light in and open the shutter for 217 seconds. The final shot was a mixture of the two exposures I shot with the ND filter. Let's have a look at them again. Before going to Photoshop I corrected them a bit in Lightroom. Here we can see before and after of the underexposed shot. I corrected the lens distortion, adjusted the white balance and pushed the shadows a bit. This is the overexposed one and after applying similar corrections as before and also recovering some highlights for better blending, I got something like this. Alright, now let's move on to Photoshop. Here we can see the finished project and I'm going to go over every layer and show you what's going on there. Let's turn off all the layers and start from the bottom. 
Our shots are at the bottom of the layer list. The first step I did was to blend them together using the best parts from each photo. As we can see from the layer mask, the underexposed photo was used only in the sun area and at the bottom to minimize the sun flare. Other areas are covered by the overexposed frame. This way we minimize the noise in the shadows. The general brightness of the picture can be adjusted later. In the next step I remove the vignetting in the corners and remove the sun flare completely. In layer 3 I used a spot healing brush to remove all those small pebbles that are in the highlighted area. In layer 4 I blurred the top part of the sky to make the clouds more consistent. In layer 5 and 6 I used Gaussian blur to clean up the sea area a little bit. Uh, you can see where exactly on the following mask. Then I used levels adjustment layer to correct the exposure and contrast a little bit on the whole image. Next item on the list is a group called Dodge and Burn, containing two levels adjustment layers used to accentuate the highlights and the shadows. And now we are going to turn on the next six adjustment layers used to change the local contrast in different areas. Each levels adjustment layer applies the contrast to the specific portion of an image. And it's much better to modify different areas using different layers. At least it's the way I do it and I find it much more flexible. And the last item on the list is just subtle Orton effect, which consists of Gaussian blur on the whole image and the blending mode change to hard light. Then we apply a little bit of masking to accentuate the highlights a bit more. This action can be found on my website, so check the description of this video for the link to this specific action. If you have any requests for the future deconstructing the photo episodes, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you next time!